Service Conservation Commission, March 15th, 2018. We are meeting in the Sturbridge Center Office Building, 301 Main Street on the second floor. If you'd like to join us, we have um, four out of five, so we have a quorum. I will start off by saying um, there are no, no update on CPA at this time. Ditto for the Trails Committee. They're meeting tonight. Their meeting last week had to be postponed for a week. All right. So we can go right to walk-ins? Oh, what? I was just going to say, um, okay. Gene asked me to pass this out to you guys and let you know that they're doing an open space and recreation photo contest for their um, 2018 plan. So they're asking for photo submissions from different age groups of your favorite um, place in town. All right. Okay. Pass them along. Passing these along. Are you Dan? Oh, okay. You can come on up. We'll. we'll. So I was expecting Clarence to be here too. He said he would be here for six. Well, if we can get it done before Clarence gets here, we're going to save a lot of time. <laughs> if you have her handle the bow, you can catch him before he gets oh, to the room. <laughs> All right, so you guys are going to... Welcome back. Thank you. Yes, yep. thank you for, uh, for having me. I yep. appreciate it. Name? Uh, so, yes, I would like to uh, once again uh, utilize the... Oh, sorry. Name? Oh, Daniel Krasnecki, Archery Chairman, Hamilton Round and Gun Club. And um, so once again this year, um, we have been awarded to host the R100 uh, archery shoot. Um, as we've done in years past, I would like to get permission from the town to use the properties that abut um, the Hamilton properties for, uh, for our shoot. Um, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 to 500 shooters that walk through. Um, I'd like to say we treat your property like we treat our property. Uh, we feel we're good stewards, um, no trash, all cleaned up. My team is pretty good at doing that. Um, the only thing that we do do is trim some lanes um, such that there's a clean shot to the target. Um, and I know I talk about that a lot. I have five copies. If you'd like to take a look. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah. Um, so on the second page, there's a, a map, if you will. Um, the the areas outlined in, sorry, they're double sided. Um, the areas outlined in red are basically town properties. The areas operate outlined in blue are club properties. So that's what I use. Um, and I also include in some pictures of uh, of shoots in years past, so you can kind of get a, a feel for um, kind of what goes on and. So we make lanes about, I'd say, three feet wide, anywhere from 20 yards, uh, 10 yards, all the way out to 55 yards long, um, depending on the target size and the, uh, um, the ability of the archer. All right. Do you guys reuse some of the same locations that maybe you cleared already? Yeah, or those so that's, okay. that's easiest. Um, <coughs> I try to do something different every year in that. So. So this is our sixth year, I think, now. Six. I think it's pretty close to that. Um, I, didn't, I don't want to be repetitious, so people keep coming back. Um, I don't know if you realize, but we have people come all the way from Canada to shoot this. Yeah, Canada, New York. Um, I think we had a Colorado license plate last year. I'm not sure, probably a rental car, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of exciting, yeah. Um, and again, it's good for the town, so they, they gotta stay somewhere, they gotta eat somewhere. So it benefits all of us. You're going to handle the parking the same way you have in the past? Yep. So all the parking will be in our parking lot. Um, we have ample parking for, I think, upwards of like 300 cars. At the Hamilton Rod and Gun Club? At the Hamilton Rod and Gun Club. I can comment that in the six or seven years that you've been coming before us, after you guys leave, we have never had one single negative comment. I would Not like one. To, thank you. And I would like yeah. to keep it that way. I've got the... Um, Letter here, Dan, yep. that, that we gave you. I just want to just review it because it makes sense to just issue the same. From last year. From last year. Um, it's going to be on the 22nd and the 20 through the 24th. Yeah, so um, what happened this year was uh, because of the quantity of people that we have, Reinhardt requested that we open the shoot um, Friday afternoon at noontime. 
Um, so we agreed to try to get more people yeah. through to get more yeah. options. So it would be from the 22nd through the 24th. All right. Um, yeah, terms of agreement with Opaquem Land Trust, you will. Yep. So yeah. I already, yeah. I've already okay. talked to Ed yeah. Hood, and we have a. The, the, yeah, he there's, sent that to there's us. There's three bullets on UTVs, um, which you will abide by. Yep. Yeah. Um, responsible for damage resulting from the event. Um, uh, I don't think it's all pretty basic. It's all pretty basic. Yeah. So I don't think we have any problem with it. All in favor? Okay. So you'll issue. Yep, a new letter. We'll send a new letter okay, out cool. for you. Um, the only other thing that I will add is for those three days, we add the town to our insurance policy. Um, we renew in May. So once we renew, we add the town to for those three days to make sure you're covered by our policy, and we cover Reinhardt for that right, too. Great. Um, once I get that, I'll send, send it to it you, Becky. Perfect. Yep, perfect. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. Can I ask a question? Um, so should we should I plan on doing this every year? So uh, same. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it's the same too because for the next 99 years, Opecum has the conservation restriction. Yeah. So I'm okay. I, I I chat with Ed every once in a while, and Clarence is pretty much in tune. With and that. Barnacle will be here. So you. Oh, he will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you okay. very hey, much. thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Say hi to Clarence for us. I will. Yeah. You might be here. <laughs> <coughs> Have a good one. All right. So I have two signatures. If you want to, we can right. do the. I have two um, two things for signatures. One is not on the agenda because I didn't think it was going to be ready. The orders of conditions I sent to you for 202 Lake Road. I was waiting on a um, stamped plan for it, but I did send them to you guys to look at. This was the Raisin Rees build that we approved last time with Jalbert yep. Engineering. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so I have those done if you want to sign those. And then just so you know, the first two pages, um, I have some new letters that I'm sending to people. It's a certificate of understanding where they understand, like the property owner, um, that you know they're responsible for the work whether it's done by someone else or whatnot oh, okay. so there's some different yeah. things on there just so they understand there's conditions to be met and etc oh wow um i'll take a look at them on the one that i have okay uh, and i can email it to you yeah. guys is it not on the it's not on the email Did you no send? i didn't send it on the email but well, i can send, send, a, send it out to us yeah i'll so send it to you it. to look at so we can take a look at it makes sense Also have orders of conditions. This was for 114 Lead Mine Lane, which we saw about a month and a half ago. Um, this is where he had the deck with the um, the patio, the built-up patio underneath, and he had the gravel infiltration underneath. We asked him to um, connect the gutters underneath, which he has done. He sent me a photo. Otherwise, everything else was okay on this okay. one. Yep, mm -hmm. I had shown you some pictures of it then. There's one ongoing condition, but it's one of those um, generic ones for no additional alteration. Watsky. In the orders of conditions were uh, Stearns. So we have a couple more minutes just to give you an yep. update 32 Tintasqua shore um, that was where he cleared the vegetation going down the bank yeah he um, so I've been in contact with um, Lenny Jalber and Steve Soper at Soper construction they didn't they weren't able to get the erosion controls in but um, Steve Soper um, has it on their schedule and once 
they have the ability to get there probably after this next upcoming storm they're going to go in and get the erosion controls in they'll shovel if they have to um, but it will get done before everything melts i talked to them about it so just to let you know and then i wanted to ask you too now as we move forward with that he's committed to doing some type of long-term plan which we can help them develop but um are we going to want him to do that as a notice of intent versus through like an enforcement order we hadn't really talked about that so shouldn't it be a notice of intent i think that would be fine to do it that way have him do it as a notice of intent well, i think we get better i agree yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I was thinking is have yeah. it come through as a notice of intent. It gives us an order of conditions that's really tight. Yep. As opposed to simply throwing things off the wall. Yeah. I think it would be much better as an NOI. I also would suggest strongly that you have Mr. Sopa indicate to you when the erosion controls are in so you can go and check on them. Right, he will. Because of the yep. steepness of the slope. I'm really concerned that when the spring rains come we're going to have a problem out yeah there. he was going to let me know once they were in so okay. yeah yep another point would be to make sure that they know that they should put everything in because i know that they plan on putting stairs right well that's what i was thinking too so, anything I mean, you want to do put it in your notice, notice of in intent, intent. yeah yeah yep. yep. okay. well, yeah didn't he talk about uh, repairing some of the wall down at the base of that slope too well there's no wall no, there there's no wall there no i mean I it's, it's cut out about... it's cut out down there yeah but right maybe they they might need to do something there where to stabilize that yeah. 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 yeah yeah well three minutes yep three all minutes. right so update another one um 22 cedar lake drive i've been talking to them they will be coming to our next meeting um, with a plan for the stair revision. Um, the owner did come in and talk to him. I talked to the contractor, um, talked about different options with the trees. So they're going to um, come back at that meeting and talk about how to move forward with that. Okay. Has a tree had soil put around it yet? No. So, um, hi there. Um, the contractor was supposed to try to get it over the weekend and couldn't and then with the storm he couldn't get it either we asked for this three weeks ago no we i know a storm three weeks ago and i think that um i mean it was something that we suggested to do and i think that we need to think about you know the, the roots that were exposed there like i was trying to go back through like joe's report a little bit um with the the damaged roots there would it have been a benefit or is it you know were those roots those surface roots there were they already damaged so I, I don't know I had made it as a suggestion but I think that um, they're gonna get the soil there he said he will get the soil I think this last storm didn't help with getting that to happen um, as it is there's limited places he said he did find a place that does like indoor monster truck things that he could get some soil from but he was having a hard time finding it um, but Becky it wasn't the last meeting it was a meeting before that well right it was the first meeting well, he came in that we note. had said that and yeah. at that time he said he was having difficulty finding the material to put in to cover those roots it does not take four weeks without a snowstorm to be able to find materials to cover those roots you're not talking about 2,000 cubic yards of material I think it's delayed deliberately I think it was more than a I, suggestion. I think we were I think a little it was stronger than just saying, you know, why don't you do it? I mean, it would be a nice thing. I think we were pretty strong I on it. we said it had to be done. And, yeah. 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 You know. the next day to, to look at right, it. and they were going to do it. And then they were no, it, it was and, discussed that so way, yeah. why isn't that causing us to have stronger issues with this? This is crazy. This is absolutely well, crazy because the whole project started significantly long time ago. And we've had delay after delay and now we tell them fix it now and we're coming tomorrow to take another look at it and four weeks later it's still not done I the guy's going to be held accountable here and it's the owner i think we need to i mean i don't know that adding that bit of soil would have made a difference i don't know and i think we I need to ask someone germane. that knows that but i think what we need to do i think is the only way we're going to know is if there's an issue with that tree is once it leaves out or if it doesn't leave out and I think that's, that's, that's going to be the determining the factor yeah. I'm not trying to argue about getting soil or not and I'm not making excuses for them I'm 
telling you what they've been telling me. And I know it's winter and I know it's a little bit harder, but I think that I don't know that that small amount of roots that was exposed that may or may not have already been dead, getting the soil would have made a huge difference at this point. I'm not saying that it didn't, but I'm just saying that I don't know that that would be enough. when they were doing the work originally, it, yeah, I agree that, it, that right now it, those roots are probably. Yeah, but see, but the, uh, to Dave's point, it goes beyond. Um, it go. It goes beyond a debate or an argument of, of logic. The committee said, right. "This is what we want." They said, "Yes, that's what we'll do," and they didn't do it. And then, and then, if they come back and argue with you, you you should not be talking logic with them. You should be saying that, "Look, that's what was voted on." You were at the meeting. Um, do it. Okay. I, well, I don't think there's any question about the fact that if you asked me to, I could get you some soil tomorrow morning. I'd probably get you a whole truckload. All right. Well, I'm just relaying the information, but they will be coming in at our next meeting. So yeah. I just wanted to let you know that. Why should we have to wait until the next meeting to get it done? What we asked for four weeks ago. I don't get that. Well, they're coming in to discuss the trees and talk about a revised plan with the stairs, where they had the stairs there. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but they can still do the soil before that. Right, and my understanding was that he was gonna do it by today. I did not hear from him today. I will call him tomorrow, the contractor, to find out. We'd like a picture of it completed. Well, I'll go look at it once it's done, okay. but right, the, the owner okay. did Unfortunately, you're gonna be told that they couldn't do it because of the snowstorm, <laughs> and they won't be able to do it next week because we're getting another snowstorm. <laughs> I mean, this thing is gonna be delayed for until springtime, and it's, what, two years already that's yeah. been <laughs> futzed around? Well, yeah, it's been, no, it hasn't right, been a year, but. let's um, move All right, I think we on. need to be a little stronger um, with this. Yeah. We're ready for our 615? Yep. Opens. In the interest of saving time, the Sturbridge Conservation Commission will hold all public hearings tonight for work within a wetland, water body, or resource area and or within the 200-foot buffer zone to a wetland, water body, or resource area in accordance with the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, and associated regulations, and the Town of Sturbridge Wetland Bylaws and associated regulations. We will not be reading the newspaper ad. Prior to opening the first hearing for each project, the applicant is to submit proof of notification to abutters within 200 feet of the subject property line and proof of legal newspaper advertisement. If these items are not submitted, the public hearing will not open. Additionally, prior to the start of each public hearing, we will announce the location of the project, the applicant, and the applicant's representative. If any of the visitors have not legibly signed in yet, please do. Also, if any visitors are recording this meeting, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 615, Request for Determination of Applicability, One River Road, Hadley Zabinski, uh, Redevelopment of Site for Pet Daycare Facility, Removal of Existing Gravel Parking Lot for, and Associated Landscaping to Loam and Seed, uh, Burton Engineering. Good evening. Yeah. I'm Peter from Burton Engineering. Peter yeah. um, So... Basically, I have all of them. So if you want me to yeah, move to different, to cheat three. That would be easiest. I can't see what it says down there for sheet. Yeah, that would be okay. Pick five, actually. You should know that we did take a site visit on Tuesday. Okay. So, uh, wetland buffer, two hundred foot wetland buffer, riverfront area. Really, the only work within that riverfront area is taking out a little bit of existing kind of gravel parking area, loaming and seeding, and planting some new landscaping trees. Um, the rest of the project includes pet areas, um, astroturf over gravel. Go more slowly, where's the ast astroturf? Um, so these areas are here, in the fences. Um, so any solid waste would be picked up, um, bagged, put in the trash. The garbage company would come two to three times a week to take care of that. Um, liquid waste would go through the extra turf into the ground like a normal septic system. Um, the pavement, existing pavement, it's not in great condition, so whatever necessary repairs would be done. Um, I know there's a couple pretty good potholes, so. Um, there's a 
catch basin, it's probably a dry well on this side. That would be <coughs> removed, um, replaced with a gravel infiltration or infill. I can't think of the word. Um, we could have a trench with a pipe in it um, to take the storm water and direct it to the back of the property. Um, also, an area drain in front to connect into the existing uh, drainage system in the road. Uh, a little bit of tree planting here. Uh, and some grading, but pretty minimal site work. Where are your dog runs? Um, these are the outdoor play areas over here. I see. And and the and kennel the areas is what the triangle above it or where? Um, so the dogs will only be allowed to go into these areas. Otherwise, they're inside the building. How many dogs? I think she has room for forty overnight, eighty total. How big a space? For the interior? Yeah, for 80 dogs. Um, I don't know, she's renovating the building, um, basement, first, second floor. Right, yeah, it's three floors. So some of the dogs will be living on the third floor, is that a, a second floor? Um, yeah, they'll be brought um, wherever she has her. Um, I might have building plans. I think I might have them if you it's good to have a dog expert on the committee. <laughs> <laughs> Three pages so how does an older or a, a, a disabled dog get up to the third floor? Is there an elevator or how would I? Um, there's rooms on the first floor that they would probably just say to those dogs. I see. And, and if the first floor is all occupied with dogs that are already in there, you're going to carry them up? I mean... Uh, they probably move a dog that could walk and put a handicapped dog where that one was. I see. <laughs> well... Fortunately, I won't have to kennel my dogs, but from the looks of this, I wouldn't put them there. But that's my opinion. That has nothing to do with the plan. Anything else? Meanwhile, back to the agent. Yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, no you want to go ahead. So um, just some notes that I had. So, right, it's minimal work within the 200 riverfront in right. the buffer zone. Yep. We're looking at removal of just some um, gravel parking, planting some trees. I didn't know there's a lot of dead trees back there. Or if you guys are going to take those out, with planting the new ones in, it's kind of the... Yeah, I think she wanted to not really okay. take anything out that she didn't have to, but yeah, if you'd recommend taking them down, I'm sure I don't think we'd do have it. a concern with those those trees with within the, the yard, the, yeah. the dead trees we saw there. Habitat. So, right, yeah. she would just, just need to let us know if she yeah. does decide to do Habitat. that. Habitat, yep. Um, right, the loaming and seeding, some of that's existing lawn area. There was some sand we saw back there, so it would probably just be an improvement and continued use for, looks like it's probably mowed most of it right now. Um, I mean, although the parking lot and the, the outfall is outside of our jurisdiction, it is about 20 feet away from Riverfront, so it would have been nice to see some improvements to the stormwater management system, um, doing some best management practices um, for water quality. Um, definitely would be a, a plus um, there, but as it is now, unless there is an issue and there's, you know, something that happens within the jurisdictional area, it's outside of our area. They also, um, because it's not increasing the impervious surface, they're actually decreasing <coughs> a little bit. It doesn't trigger any of the, the bylaw stormwater, um, too, so they're not subject to that within the town. Um, yeah, I think um, we also got comments from the DPW, so what we're going to do is take Right now we have a 12 inch clean out where the pipe turns. We're gonna replace that with basically a 36 inch plastic manhole with a sump. So we'll take out some of that TSS okay. and put a hood on it. Okay, yeah, I saw uh, Greg's comments there, so I was gonna ask you about that. So that'll help with that. And we'll probably do the same thing on the other one too, so. Okay, that's great to see. Um, one other thing that I had um, commented on when I commented for planning was that like the pet relief areas um, maybe including um, any long-term maintenance yep. that might be needed in that operation and maintenance plan. Yep, um, 
yeah, to make sure that they're, you know, nothing is, um, it continues to infiltrate and nothing's really run off. Now, the, the runoff from the pet um, play areas, do you anticipate any runoff into those, those sowing, is it like swales no, on the side? Just, or? just um, flow over, over the ground and back towards that. Okay. So it shouldn't flow onto the pavement and then. Into the system? Right. Okay. I, yeah, I know DPW made a comment about maybe eventually doing like an E. coli test just to make yeah. sure nothing's getting in there. So I think that's a really good idea. Um, so because of the minimal work within our jurisdictional areas, I was going to recommend a positive number five that's subject to local bylaw. Um, if it wasn't riverfront, I would say that it probably would meet the minor um, project um, conditions under um, Wetlands Protection Act. But um, in this in instance, I would say no because it's in riverfront. So I give it a negative number three. And I would recommend some conditions just um, they have erosion control on there um, just to let us know when it's put in and we can check it um, to keep it in place until the site's stabilized and probably just have us yep. check it um, before you take it out. Um, typical post design, et cetera. So be my recommendations. David? Well, it's non-jurisdictional, but I'm curious about roof runoff. Because um, so at the present time, it's running right out into the driveway. Right, yeah, those gutters, it'll, it'll remain, come to the driveway, but it'll sheet flow over the pavement to this area drain or to this uh, Doesn't that become a safety concern? Um, no, it shouldn't. So you're using non-slip water when it comes off the roof? Um, I mean, it's going to travel over the parking lot regardless of where it's coming from, though. Well, you're having people walk from the parking lot to the front door, <coughs> and the storm drain is putting the water out near the front door. Um, yeah, we can redirect it however you would want, I guess. I'm just thinking purely from a safety aspect, because right. it's non-jurisdictional, at least for now. Not only that, all the customers have four legs. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, maybe there could be an improvement to add yeah. a pipe and kind of redirect it in a sure. different way. Yeah, but it did look like, I don't know what the, it was dug up. Steve, why don't you go then? Uh, just briefly, I, I can't really read the the, uh, the key over here. What yep. what is this shaded so area here? So that's um, going to be that's basically existing woods remaining woods. Um, that second one down would be grass lawn area. Okay. Um, this one is pavement. Yep. So we're actually um, reducing the amount of pavement. Um, this one is just gravel walkway, and the last one is the AstroTurf. I'm not sure where you who you checked that with, but aren't there state regulations as to uh, size of kennels and the amount of dogs that you can put into a given space and and all of that re the dog uh, regulations concerning uh, the amount of dogs that can be accommodated uh, because that to me looks like an awful small space for that many dogs. Um, we didn't do the building plans. I'm sure the architect and the respectful owner uh, looked into that. They have to get a building permit to renovate it, so. Yeah, but unfortunately, when it comes to things like animals, people are not as vigilant as they are when it comes to people. And so nothing would surprise me if they just said, okay, it looks fine. <coughs> because theoretically, there should be, a, I think there are state standards as to how many square feet each kennel should be and spaces between them and aisles and just like you have an accessible building. Yep. I'm, I'm sure the architect did his due diligence. Who's I mean, going before that's the building that's inspector? That's hmm? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. Yeah, it's going, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's really, you know, you may be correct, but it, it's not our privy. I know. As far as um, our jurisdictional area, it, it appears like it's an improvement to me um, right. because you're moving that gravel drive and you're putting in the, this vegetation. So mm -hmm. I think that's great. Yeah. So I appreciate that. What, um, you have a kiln back here? Yep. What are you going to do with that? That will just remain unused, I guess. It's full of trash. Is it? Yeah. You can it's within the 200 feet, too. Yeah. You can certainly clean that out. Or Why don't they get rid of it? It was functionally, if it was functionally for burning, right. uh, it's illegal. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'll bring that up with the owner. And yeah, I, I would think that would be a good idea. And she may have plans to do those type of things in the future. Um, I mean, she had talked about the other buildings that she wouldn't be using now previously. I talked to her before, but she's mostly just doing, um, proposing what she wants to do now and maybe add things with What other buildings? buildings? Are these over here, you mean? Right, there's the two buildings on the side. So I think right now she's doing just what she kind of needs to, I think. To well, this is within our 200 feet. so that's No, I we're. know. It's a good point, and we can, we can yeah. put that in our letter to her. Now, just it, to is this the extent that. of her ownership property? Correct. Huh? That's her property line here? Yep. The other piece is being um, segmented off this? It was one piece? No, it's been two. It's, it was two parts. It's always been two? I don't know when it changed to, but it, the, it wasn't one with changed. The big trash trailer on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's a separate parcel, and that was being same owner, separate parcel. Is it the same I, owner? I think so. Yeah. I think I mean they were, I believe, trying to give it to Sturbridge Village. So. Because originally she wanted that one, but it's that's not very usable. So. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's, that's okay, Becca. I don't think right. anything, um, anything else, gentlemen? Do I have uh, anybody in the audience interested in this project? If that's the case, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So move. Do I have a second? I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right, do I have a motion to approve the project? Stephen will make that motion. I uh, make a motion to um, approve the project with a positive number five and a negative number three determination, and to add the conditions to uh, remove or at least clean up the kiln. Second the motion. Yeah. <coughs> In discussion. The erosion controls too. Right. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm abstaining. Abstain, okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we're now at 6.30. Thanks, Peter. We have a request for determination of applicability. One River Road. Hadley of Sabinski. Redevelop. Oh, no, wait a minute, I jumped. Uh, request for determination of applicability, 10 Shattuck Road. Um, can I just ask you guys to sign we this determination we'll get you too? Guys out on time for your yeah. seven o'clock meeting. Yeah. <laughs> we pushed it out to next week. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> too many people in too many different places. Yes, too many families. Becky's headlights aren't working, so we want this meeting over by daylight. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I thought we were all set. So. <laughs> it's not my fault. Your permit expired. <laughs> <laughs> Mine either. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Damn, three years goes by fast, doesn't it, Tom? Uh, three? <laughs> that was actually granted back in 2010. Oh. Yeah, that one's, well, no, but well, those this, orders of conditions started before that. So yeah. those orders of conditions were amended and extended amended, and, right. and amended. And yeah, but didn't we get right. the automatic government Please introduce extension? yourselves and sure. let's. Tom Chamberlain, associate member of the uh, Sturbridge Trails Committee. Gary Staub, co-chair of Trails Committee. Okay. So basically, uh, we're here tonight um, to request the determination to uh, construct the uh, trailhead parking lot at 10 Old Sturbridge Village Road as part of the Lead Mine Mountain property. Um, a very brief history. Um, this parking lot was uh, developed and proposed back in 2009, uh, permitted by the commission in 2010, uh, and then with the uh, state fish and wildlife coming in and proposing the dam removal, uh, this project kind of sat in limbo uh, with some uh, thought that maybe the state would be able to build uh, a portion, if not all of this, as part of the dam removal project. And here we are now, fast forward eight years later, and we now know that all they did was do some limited clearing, and uh, the commission is ready to move forward with the construction of the parking lot. 
Uh, we have the funds in place to do so. Uh, however, uh, it was discovered that uh, in the interim eight years, the various rules and regulations governing permits have changed and the permit that the commission had issued for this has long since expired. And so here we are uh, back before the commission to uh, get it renewed. Uh, I will note that as uh, you see up on the screen, in consultation with the DPW director, uh, he had suggested uh, reducing by the, the parking lot by one space, and by eliminating that one space will reduce the amount of excavation uh, and earthwork that he needs to do by, I think, approximately half, Becky, if I remember Greg's kind of... It was a significant reduction of the amount of earthwork he'd need to do just to dig out to get that one parking space. So I'm down to 19. Uh, no, that brings it, I believe, down now to 32. This was a 33 oh, car parking okay. lot. So this this brings it down to like 32 spaces. I mean, you can I don't have that number in front of me, but, you, you know, obviously you can count the number of spaces. Um, you know, so pretty much uh, all the uh, we met with Old Sturbridge Village. Uh, you know, we have the uh, easement, the temporary construction easement, plus the driveway access uh, to do the work. And uh, we're just here. Uh, Greg's ready to go, subject to the snow now melting. Uh, <laughs> August? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're uh, just here before the board now to get your blessing on it again, please. Okay. I just want to say I have the legal ad and the yep. butter notifications. Yep. Um, right, I've been kind of involved with this this project, helping, and we help with the filing for it. Um, so, I mean, it was previously rolled into orders of conditions um, that we had, and it went it got amended with a trail going in. Since then, um, you know, the project was reduced and revised and the whole project is within the footprint that was already cleared for the Hammett Brook project for their landing for their equipment etc so the area has already been cleared of vegetation so it's an existing disturbed site um, they'll be doing um, some of the work on the side with the grading um, putting the gravel down there will be an infiltration trench on the side to capture it will be graded towards that trench right now actually I've gone out there is, is that the trench there yeah the trench on the side yeah. um, you know, some of the, the erosion is kind of going down the driveway to the end by Old Surbridge Village Road. So I think it will be a long-term improvement from what is there right now to have that infiltrated to the side. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say, um, I mean, there, there are erosion controls shown on the plan. It's just maybe maybe we should just add something in the front going down the driveway until it's done too, just to have something extra protective there, keeping stuff out of the, going down the driveway into the road. Um, but we can look at that as the project's going okay. on and see yeah. if, yeah, Again, yeah. you know, yeah. We, it's, it's a minor thing, uh, yep. just erosion controls. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a request for determination of applicability. Um, because of the reduction in scope of the project and because it's within the existing disturbed area, I think that it can move forward under a determination of applicability um, and that it would recommend a positive number five being subject to the local bylaw and a negative number three because it is within buffer zone and just having those conditions um, for erosion control and just to, you know, have someone responsible for checking and maintaining them. Typical post assign, and then um, maybe something with a condition for, um, you know, long-term maintenance of checking the, you know, the drainage trench to make sure that everything's functioning correctly, which you guys probably do anyways, but it would just be a typical condition, so. Okay. Paul, start down at your end. I'm fine with it. David? Two questions, Tom. You're going to have to do more clearing in order to move the um, fence, in order to move the gate, the entry gate. Um, I don't believe I, I I haven't actually measured what Greg has done for clearing. I don't know if he's cleared it to the you know scope of work shown on the plan or not. But it would be a minimum anyway, wouldn't it? It would be very minimal. Yeah, we're we're actually um, in conversations with the DPW director. Uh, we're going to trash that gate, and we're going to buy a new one, the metal post gate that we've been using in the other facilities. He's going to install two new posts, you know, at the end. So instead of wood posts, you're going to put granite posts? No, no, no. They'll be wood no. posts. Okay. They'll be wood posts. 
uh, there'll be wood posts and, uh, you know, a new gate. Uh, and that gate, once construction is complete and we're ready to open it, he'll just d demo that, pull the, the posts out in the gate and, and just demo it uh, as, as, you know, part of the cleanup and what have you. Okay. But in the interim, it'll stay while he's constructing it. Obviously, we don't want people driving, driving in yet. As you move further down the entryway, are you going to have to do anything with the wood chip pile? Mm, no. Getting close to it, aren't you, by the time you oh, move Oh, no, we're still a couple hundred feet, several hundred feet away. Oh, you away. are? Okay. Oh, yes. yeah. So you're going almost to where the gravel pit is. Oh, no. No. Uh, if, you, uh, if you go there now, he's got pins and flagging out. And like I said, I believe he's cleared the... Except for that kind of horseshoe where the horse yeah. trailers will turn, I think the basic rectangle is cleaned. Uh, although there might be a few trees on the edge that aren't. So what you see is that because on the southernmost end, uh, we run into a wetland issue there. So we, we really can't go beyond that. Okay. But he hasn't stumped it yet, has he? He has not stumped it, no. Okay. So the, there's still duff and, you know, except for the actual parking lot gravel pad that the dam removal people installed. The rest of it, even though the vegetation, you know, the trees are gone, but the stumping and the duff layer, that still is in place. We haven't disturbed any of that. Question uh, number two. We, we, need to, we need to get the, the erosion control back up in place too. Because mm -hmm. we had to move some of that because of the, they didn't, the state didn't put it. Had we known what we know, we would know. But right. uh, So we had them remove it because it was just in the way of the park. Well, they also yeah. bait and switched. Right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it okay. is, you know. So <laughs> question number two. Yep. The entryway itself yes. is in not good shape. Correct. And is there part of the plan to resurrect that as a true entryway? Yes. Or will it still be a spring buster? We, we will, uh, part of this work includes uh, a better defining the 20 foot wide driveway okay. to the property. Uh, Greg does want to clean up both slopes that are there. And we're gonna wood chip them, you know, oh, okay. get get a get a nice uniform grade. Yep. Wood chip them, so it'll be aesthetically more pleasing. When are you gonna start this? Springtime. Uh, I know it's spring August time. when the snow's <laughs> gone. <laughs> it, it now depends on the snow. Quite frankly, uh, Greg was probably gonna have the dozer in there uh, as soon as the the permit would allow it to do it. Right. Uh, but that might be delayed until the snow right. goes. Because right you know, now, as long as whenever there isn't snow, there's mud. Right, because of the what the way right. the state left it. Right. Yeah, I know. Yep. And, and they'll be going back through too. I don't know how they much need to go back in there because they're not done yet. So yeah. that's the other thing we're going to have to play a little bit of a you know cat and mouse game with them with all, uh, for what Greg can actually fully all do because they still have to come back in and finish the job. It's not. Yeah, but they're not yet. going back in and using that as a staging area again. No, though. there's nothing that says they can. Unfortunately. Right, and I don't know if they need big equipment to go in there, but if they... But I know they still got landscaping to do, yeah. and, and they yeah. still got to restore the trails. So there's, you know, they're still going to be, you know, bringing dump trucks Heavier and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if they destroy what we do, you know. Right. right. Yeah, that, that's yeah. a good question. Well, and they're supposed to, they were planning on, by the end of March, provided the weather stayed good, which has <laughs> changed, so... Well, let me hey. repeat. You mean August? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You good? No I'm good okay. with it too. I have no questions. Uh, anybody in the audience like to speak on this? No. I move we close the public hearing. Second. Discuss discussion. All in favor? Okay, Steve, you want to give it a sure. positive number five and a negative number three? Yep. I <laughs> know. <laughs> so moved. Uh, with the uh, extra conditions, uh, checking the. Drainage and uh, the other erosion controls. Yeah, yeah, erosion controls. Second. Discussion. All in favor. Thanks, Tommy. One what? more Thank time. You. Yeah. One more time. Gary. You guys want to sign? Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. So you guys yeah. did move to next week. Uh, to be determined. Uh, yes. Brandon's still trying to see what night works for everybody. Okay. If it doesn't go to the dance group, everybody else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think he's looking at next Thursday, but I'm not, yeah, like I said, he's waiting to see. You're going to notify us? 
I, I will. Yep. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bye. guys. Gary, we appreciated your comments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are now at um, tree removal request. Is yep. that next? Yep. Yeah. Come on up, guys. You can sit down. Oh, no, you can sit down if you want. Yeah. Sit down, yeah. <laughs> you, have your, you have your own microphone. Oh. You don't use that much anymore. It was there for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> that works much better. <laughs> if you have, yeah. <laughs> don't ask if you don't want me to sing. Uh, please introduce yourselves for the audience at home. Uh, we are uh, Roger and Diana LeBlanc. Okay. I'm Roger. <laughs> Great clarification. Okay. Thank you. So um, a few of us were able to go out on Monday for our site visit, which we were lucky we were able to reschedule from Tuesday. So we did um, view the site and we did view the trees. So it looks like there's a total of eight eight trees. Yeah, four little ones at the corner right near the deck. Yep, okay. and then two along the side, two on the bank in. And then I took some pictures so the others Correct. could see. Um, there's one is a um, small white pine. I guess I can just go through the pictures. It might be easier. Oh, so that's just a little. Did you want to take the shrub out too? I saw the caution on it. No, that's uh, that's where the well, we have a well. That's so, uh, we have oh, a okay, share, okay. Share I just took a picture of it. Just sorry, I think it was a problem, no, anyways. Sorry. But no, that's not, that's not all right. So for those who weren't there, the road is up at the top of the the stairs. There, this is a um, a white pine. There's electrical lines that go through it, and then they have a septic pipe. Their septic's right on that hillside right there. So that was the explanation for why they wanted that one removed. Um, that one, I didn't measure. How, how far would you say that's from the lake? Pretty far? 125 Yeah, feet. okay. I don't know. I was going to say 100. Like yeah, it's probably. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, this is um, a hemlock when you're walking up the steps to go back up to the road. So that one's about the same distance from the lake. Um, they did have a uh, certified arborist went out to look at it and give them an estimate for the work. So the arborist did say that the hemlocks on site um, do have the woolly adelgid on them. Um, then we have, so that's just a little bit further of that tree. This is down um, in front of the house looking um, to the side. There's a cluster of um, hemlocks over here, um, a group of small, like three or four here, and a couple that go up on the side here that also were identified by the arbors to have the This one, oh, this one is on the side here. Actually, we had a question. Do you own that lot on the side there? Okay, that's a different person. I, I looked up on our, our map. Okay. The man is from Ohio or uh, something. No, Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, somewhere out of state. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think that he was He comes under. every 10 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, just to. You better bring a tent with him the next time he comes. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I yeah, know. It's, it's a trailer that's collapsed. Yeah. 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 I think, it's, yeah. It's really a mess, but. Um, it gives us privacy. <laughs> yeah, no. Those, those two trees, the, and, I, and I showed, I showed the pictures when you came, when, when I yep. came initially, that whole side of the roof, and it's only like five years old, the rest of the roof. Oh, you didn't get like to see the new. green. It's all thick green from those trees because they're hanging right on. They're actually touching the, the roof, all the branches from those trees, and it's pretty close to the house. Yeah, I, don't have, um, I, didn't, I didn't take a picture of the uh, roof. We couldn't see it when we were there. It was snow on it. Anyway. Yeah, it was snow on it anyways. I but know, the, thank you for the, going down the, there. It's uh, a the formidable slope. task. Yeah. No, we don't need them. <laughs> with the slope you have on the roof, you're always going to have that in that spot. You get that whole hillside to come down yeah. on you. Yeah. You're not going to solve it with this cutting. It, uh, the branches it, it make you feel better, but it's, you're not going to solve yeah. it with this cutting. So, uh, Some more sunlight might help yeah. the situation. Yeah. Did you see Anything the big else, tree Becky? across the street? Mm -hmm. and it doesn't belong to us, the one that's going to fall onto all the... It's going to fall. It's die, You know, it's all the roots are growing into the catch basin, and it's really a mess Wh over there. Whose property is it on? Um, Our neighbor. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, I'm not sure we, we who owns to, that property, but... You know, you should tell them you're going to have somebody, an 
uh, up there cutting. If he wants to have it done, he can probably get a reasonable price on it because he's going to be liable. We don't have anything to do with it. It's out of, outside of the 200 feet. I know. I know. I asked. I asked the electric company because I was afraid. It, you know, it's it would fall yeah, it's, and it's ready to, and really it's cause a lot of damage for everybody on the it's whole. It's going to take our, that whole stairway out that we have and probably yeah. all the power lines. and probably the house too. I think it'll hit. It's the private house. property. I know. Yeah. There is a yeah. There's a yeah. house right there. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, and they're very nice. They're nice people, yeah. and they just bought it. They're young. You know, I mean, maybe they'll take it down eventually. Yeah. Anybody have any comments? Becky? Um, pretty much it, Becky? Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I wasn't yeah. sure about replacement. I mean, I don't know if the trees, there's a lot along the shore there. So. I, I, like I told you, that it's, it's, we don't have much view. The, the, we've let the big pines, they've grown right in. I've just let them just... Yeah, it's pretty. We like shade. Mm -hmm. And we, yeah. we, like, and we shade, like birds. So, <laughs> so it's all good You know, us. I mean, we, we... Well, you're going to have to take some of those birdhouses down when you cut that tree down. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. just, yeah. And I'm going to just relocate them. I'm just kidding. Of, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, anything? I had, I had no problem with what they want to cut down. I You know... The, it's well, pretty the, that, fair, actually, it? the second tr the tree coming down the steps, although there's only a half a tree there because it's been cut up, um, that's that's about as clean from a Willie Adult as I've seen. A what? I mean, yeah, it doesn't. It's not blighted. Yeah. It, it, it didn't show. It didn't show on that tree. It's on the side, the ones that uh, along the house, um, but I don't have any problem with taking that down either. I think it's where it's where with it is. With the caveats that no no roots be taken out yeah okay. no matter what the arborist yeah. tells you the roots have to no, stay we, we have no intentions of yeah taking any roots out of well we see occasionally that the arborist will take the tree down and then he'll put an x with the chainsaw on the stump because that increases the rapidity with which it will decompose and the problem with that is think about california about a month ago oh yeah you're on the same kind of slope yeah, your slope is like this, and you start taking down all those trees and take out the roots, you'll visit your house out in the middle of the pond. I, you know, when we, the, yeah, when we, we bought we that house that. 15 years ago, the, they had to put in a tight tank. Yeah. And so they, uh, they came in and they dug up all the road and they blocked that catch basin that sits right across the road from us, which we maintain and we keep that clean. Uh, my husband jumps down in there, cleans it all out and everything so that the water has a pathway because otherwise everybody's house would flood on the road, the road would and the road out. would yeah. wash out. Yeah. Well, anyway, they they blocked it when they excavated, and we were just moving in and we're as happy as can be. And all of a sudden, this giant monsoon comes we flying had, down a mud a, like a Nicaraguan and mudslide. And all the mud came down. It was a mudslide came down the hill. We were watching it come down the hill. And I called the guy we were buying it from. I said, John. What are we going to do with them? Once he came with his big hip basins, boots well, and showed us the... So, it was a problem. so we didn't so know we had now bought I go the in catch there with basin. A shovel and I dig it out so that the, <laughs> the pipe runs under under the road and not... But we didn't know because we had just bought it. Yeah. And, uh, all right. Um, all in favor? Thank you very much. Thank for coming you. In. Thank okay. you. Yep. Thank yeah. you. Did you like it? We, you? Won't, we won't we'll make sure the roots stay... Yeah. We'll okay. Sure we we'll take good stumps. care of it. Yeah, now, I'll send you a letter for All that right. too. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. How Thanks long is the approval good for? Because three my na my neighbor, how? Pardon? Three uh, years. Three weeks. Three, three weeks. Three years. Three weeks. Oh, I have to have them all down. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah, this poor lady just dead had dead a heart dead. attack, <laughs> man. The Zajacs right at the end are rebuilding. Yes, yes, they're rebuilding. There, I don't know if we can both. Do it do so it we don't want to get in their way because oh, they're going to okay. add a floor. Yeah. So I don't want to be in their well, way. Thank you very if much. we have thank to you. wait thank till you. next spring, we will. Mm. The price will go up. <laughs> thank you. Have thank you. Have a good one. Thanks for coming in. You're going to lock the guy in with the price this year, regardless of when he gets to do it. Correct. Then the price can't go up. That's I'll, I'll try. Yeah. That's a good that. suggestion. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank Do you think we should send what? the neighbor a letter just about the debris there, or I mean, that um, not really Yeah, around, look it up and find out. He's in Ohio somewhere. Yeah, well, they have this. I think we actually have, ought to have. If we, well, I can. 
but that, it's this one. Yeah, oh, there's his name right there. Yeah. Donald Des. Who is it? Donald Dezo. Oh, I think we should, um, let's put it on a site visit and go down and take a look at it. In the spring? Uh, yeah, well, it is spring. So. <laughs> <laughs> when there's no snow cover? When there's no snow, yeah. Okay. Um, because I think it's, it's, um, it's an abandoned, it's, you know, yeah. be called, if, if the other trailer on um, Lead Mine Road is a problem, that one certainly is too. You know? Yeah, for the same possible reason. We don't right. know where the septic system is. Right, we don't know if there has any propane tanks or anything in there. Yeah. All right. Um. What's next? So I just wanted to, I didn't have it on here, but I got an email from um, Cedric at Rapscallion, and he was asking, we can it come up with a revised concept for that field where the trailer is, et cetera. Um, he did block off that parking, so no one's been parking there. He did do that before. Um, but we had talked about, you know, just he had asked where to move it, and we didn't really know, so we said wait till spring. But so he sent me this. One side has existing and what's proposed on the opposite side. No, all right. So we each get one. You want one, Ann? Are you? Yeah, I've got an extra one. So I'm just going to pull it. So, all right, if you look at the existing. So look at it this way, yeah. So this is where you would have drove in for the parking, the yeah. parking here. So there's where he's got some loose stone here. He's got a trailer, there's a tent. This is a little bit further down the yeah. field. Down at the bottom of the field is that first hole for the disc golf course. Right. So what he wants to do, he says that it's kind of wet down there. So the upper part where the trailer in trailer is is obviously higher and it drains down in the field. We have the pond and the stream yeah. that goes around. Mm -hmm. um, so what he wants to do, if you switch it to the next side, is he would like to move the trailer so it's where people were parking, which is further away from the stream here yeah. mm -hmm. in the pond. And then since the bottom area is is wet, um, he wants to, he thought it would be an improvement if he moved that out and moved it up here. So it's still somewhat near the pond, but it's like temporary things. He has a, a tent, he's got like a viewing, platform um I maybe mean, we can go look at it i don't know how to explain it it's like a bench or a is platform it there? it's there it's down in the field and there's like a little kiosk and right. the little disc off hole so he thought if he moved it up there um he wouldn't be in that wet bottom field area um he still would be close to the pond but they're kind of they're not it's not like a permanent structure the problem was that it was in the wet and so he's suggesting to take it out of the wet yeah, yeah, why don't we take a look at it on our next, next site visit? Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at it after the snow melts. Well, that would okay. be the next site visit. Because we're not going to go out on a site visit until the snow melts. <laughs> right, and we have a couple, we have like two or three weeks till our next meeting anyways. Because yeah. yeah. it's five weeks this month, so yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, he was, he kind of wanted to move forward with it because he thought they'd move it, but now we have all the snow anyway, so yeah. obviously yeah. he's not doing right. it, so. All That's right. Good. Do we have any authority over... Uh, uh, parking along there. I mean, how, uh, where people park within the buffer zone? Yes. Because um, uh, Ann pet sits some in that area, and she said that there are sometimes that the cars are parked literally everywhere. By rest. Yeah. Oh, really? He, and yeah. Down yep. On the he, side, and I mean, it's like a giant. Parking lot with a, with especially a, on the weekend. Right, especially on the weekend. Really? Yeah, yeah. and I think what, in his last meeting he was here, he said that they're working with the police department this year to develop a plan for parking. Mm -hmm. So I think they're working on that. But right. he's he's also Rep Scallion, the property owner is Highland, who has the big events and stuff. I think they yeah. have some events there too. But yeah. so. You ever been up there? Or it's been that jam? I've been to Rep Scallion. Yeah, no, I meant that, but I mean, like, I've never noticed that there's not that many cars. Oh, I've seen it when it's, yeah. What, right, the events on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. I think, too, that the past couple of years they've been doing more weddings outside, so it's not like they have the big, like, they have the, the big harvest festival ones, like the Oktoberfest and stuff, yeah. and that brings a lot of people. But otherwise, the outside is mostly closed on the weekends um, for private events, so that might actually limit the car amount versus saying having those big events there too yeah. so 
but but I think yeah they do have parking is an issue for them I thought they were still having the musical events on weekends I think they may but I think they're really doing a lot more wedding businesses from my understanding of it outside so all right we'll take a look at okay. it next know. site visit all right um, did you see the email I sent you from number of the gentleman we met the public lands when we were at MACC from the public lands trust this guy maybe yeah yeah okay so you're on, you're on it you got these yeah I brought okay. them for the because um, I forwarded that email yeah so give you each one of these um, just for a quick summary and I and I don't know the the act that as as we all know in order to take land out of, um, uh, you know, like for example, if they wanted to use some of our land for a school or something, they'd have to go to the state. Um, it's um, and what they're this bill that they're proposing would do is make it harder for them to um, take open space from the public domain. Right. It would be a. An no net loss policy. Yeah, in other words, if they yeah. wanted to do it, they'd have to buy uh, land to Re replace the land they were um, taking. Okay. So it's really, um, and the two senators that we have, of course, um, well, you know, one of them is very much for this, so I don't think she's even um, worth sending it to, but. Um, What's the other one's name what, um, from from Palmer, Dave, our our select our senator? And just said Smolin. Smolin, yeah, Smolin. He's a representative. He's a rep, rep. I'm, that's, I'm sorry, yeah, but he'd be somebody that we should send this to to Todd. I've already sent him an email, but I'll send the card in. Too. Yeah. Yeah, and and they have a template letter too that we can send from the Conservation Commission if we want to. Would you like to send a te template letter? I hadn't thought of that. Can, we can modify it a little bit. Yeah. I can just I can sign it on behalf of you. Yeah. It's on that email if you want to look yeah, at it. That would be good. Yeah. Do you want to look at it? Yeah, I can pass it down to you. I just think that the net effect of the individual signatures makes a hell of a lot more difference. Although we can do it. Yeah, yeah well, no, we maybe both. Well, we're we're saying both yeah. here. Because yeah. they, have, they have a list that they sent us with all the um, public and private supporters. There's a lot of conservation right. commissions on it, yeah. so... It would be good to get our name with them. Yeah. But yeah. the individual letters, I know the notes to uh, Representative Smola really, he tells everybody, they make a difference. And the phone calls to his office, they make a difference. They pay attention to them because it indicates an individual voter. And if you say you want them to support it, it means you'll vote for it, yeah. typically. He's yeah. usually fairly good on stuff like this. Uh, I don't think he'll object. I don't see any reason not to send him a letter, but okay. we just have to make sure right. that he oh, votes for right, it. Right, right, sure. <clears throat> and Gobi's excellent on it. I, yeah. would, I would give her an A. I would give him a C on, on something to this range. I mean, that's how just strong much. is the governor's support for this bill? Well, the reason I'm asking is because you know the way the wind blows. Yeah. And a lot of the representatives follow what the governor says. Yeah. In terms of their votes. No idea. I'll say no more. Depending I, on how it's going to impact on his future. Yeah. What's next? Um, CPC meeting is March 21st. The 21st. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I've been asking for a while for some ideas for stuff to go to them. I've been working on some stuff for that meeting. Um, I had a, have okay. stuff to pass out. So um, originally it was kind of looking at different land acquisition possibilities. And a couple of the things that I thought would be good was that one behind River Road, which sounds like it's been um, donated to Old Sturbridge Village. Um, Didn't sound that way there. Well, I don't, I don't think he was involved with it, and I can find yeah. out a little bit more about that, but that could be a possibility if not. Uh, I also thought the, the Jolin property, which was a Butts, Plimpton, and Rod and Gun, but it, the Rod and Gun, I think, signed on that, so they bought that property. Um, mm -hmm. These ones, I just went, um, the first one is the Belanger site, which um, 
the town, I think, it, wants uh, to look towards acquiring. Is that 5300? Um, I'm going to pull I'm sorry. It I'm confused by this. 53 Holland Road, is that Belanger? Yeah. And yeah. and that's 10, 10 acres? Yeah, that's it. Because look, at it's Holy long mackerel. and skinny. Oh. See? Yeah. Yeah. So um, that one, I mean, obviously the town's interested in it for the, the Grand Trunk, but um, that we could ask them. You know, yeah. look into that and one. So I thought a, that was a possibility. There's a secondary issue behind the Belanger property, too, in terms of trails. It's not just for the Grand Trunk, but that also opens a way for one of the crossings of the Quinnebog to oh. have pedestrian traffic directly into downtown Sturbridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I didn't know where they were planning on doing that. So. Yeah. So I'm sure that's already in their works, but I thought if they were looking for some type of suggestion. Um, it's not on, no, I, I, I would... As I say, I think I've done more on, on this than most people in town. I, okay. I sent them a letter and went through the whole process, yep. and, and nothing happened. There's nothing happening. So part of the CPC funding should be to get enough money up for Leon to be able to go to Hawaii and get the paper signed in person. I think I'm more convincing than him. I should go. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Probably not. <laughs> I have family in Hawaii. I, I thought it was an idea anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, right, if you think we should That's mention very good. It. I, you know, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the yeah. next one, I mean, I went on Realtor and was just kind of looking at big properties that were for sale in town. Is it not knowing of different properties? And I found this one. I don't know, I mean, how much development potential it has because it's probably on a hill going down. But this property abuts um, Westville. So if I turn on, you can, I'm gonna, oh, layers, I'm gonna turn on our open space here. It abuts my property. I know, I was clicking around and stuff, Reference. I saw that. So this is um, Westville here. So this property, it's it's pretty big. What did I say, it's 70, almost 75 74. acres. Yeah. Um, the Grand Trunk's on the lower portion of it, so I'm not sure if there's a current easement or what. You can see where it comes through here. So it looks like it's on this property. I mean, I don't really I think know. what you'll find is that um, Grand Trunk is on Army Corps land. Well, that's what I thought, but then I saw I, this. I, believe me, when I purchased um, the piece of butting it, the actual, uh, what it showed up as, as a part of the parcel was not exactly correct. Okay, so maybe yeah, it's just it, where See, the, the line the, is. The, the, the Grand Trunk comes down along there, um, and I think Army Corps, the Army Corps stakes, you could go, we could walk it, I could show you the Army Corps stakes um, as, that go along. Isn't that going over towards the Calcutt Bridge? Yeah, it goes over to, to yeah, it. Yeah, this is it, the yeah. dam right here. Yeah. That might be the bridge right there, David, that shiny thing. This? Yeah. No, I think that's no. the dam. Oh, this oh, is that's the road that goes over. Yeah. The bridge is here. There's the bridge up okay, there. Okay, there you go. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I was just kind of looking for options because yeah. the ones I had thought were good ones are gone now. <laughs> but, so, I mean, I didn't know. It's about 75 acres. I don't know what other. It, it's, I think the last time it sold, it sold for half a million. I think they're asking the same. Yeah. Is uh, that okay. Charlie McDevitt? that's listed yeah. as the owner of yeah. that property is that yeah. your son's neighbor yeah on mcilpin yeah there was i think well yes the answer is yes oh that's right family yeah so i i don't know it's just a we know <laughs> yep so other ideas so we don't have to mention that or can, yeah, you, you can want. mention all, all, all of it. I mean, they're they're aware of it. Okay. Um, so then, another thing that I wanted to talk to them about, in that, um, you know, I was talking to Barbara a little bit about, and I was actually talking to Tom Chamberlain about because mm. he does some stuff for, for with CPC for trails, et cetera, is um, our our properties that were acquired with these funds. We have a lot of preservation or management needs things that should be could be done there that um, we can receive funding from them so one of the things I had to do back in November was try to figure out a budget for this coming year and I was kind of looking back at some of the things that m money that Glenn had asked for and a lot of things were related to these properties and Barbara had recommended that maybe you know asking for this money from 
um, CPC would be a good option um, in that certain monies can be used for certain things, some can't. So we have all the dilapidated buildings. This year we had, um, Glenn had got $2,000 to work towards removing one or some right. of these. Um, mm -hmm. yep. So I've been kind of working on that and getting some estimates, et cetera. So we have a little bit of money right now, um, but we have a lot more buildings on other properties that that need to come down and they're really access issues so it's going to be a lot more labor um we also have to do things like i kind of skipped over a section here sorry but um asbestos inspections we might have to do asbestos removal mm -hmm. so i'm working to get some prices on that um i talked to greg at dpw to get um an oh, idea no, of that's going to fall within cpc asbestos removal well, the removal. Well, the funding would be for the removal of these dilapidated buildings, which. What buildings are we talking about? Uh, so on Lead Mine, there's the big barn, the old barn building. Um, there's three outbuildings. Up on top of the hill. Yep, and then yep, and those were supposed to actually, Fish and Wildlife was telling me they were supposed to get done well, right when the property was acquired, and it just didn't happen for some reason. Well, but some of it did. Some, some of it, it did. did. Yeah. Yeah. It, but the buildings up at the top of the hill never got touched yeah. to the point where 10 years later, the toilet facilities were still there. They were still porcelain pieces on the side I, of the I think hill. I saw some of those there, but. Mm -hmm. So that's on lead mine. Plimpton has that shed yeah. down there, which has built into the CR that another that's one could an be built. That's not an access problem. Though. That the one's one not. It's farm. It's an access farm. problem. Yep. yep, so I've been working on, um, I'm mean, gonna talk to Greg at DPW about, you know, maybe how many dumpsters he think would be needed for each one and how much, how many hours of labor and I need to get, um, I mean, I talked to Soper Construction about, in, you know, estimates of cost just to give an idea, but I would like to ask them for the money to take care of those buildings. We have the $2,000, which should cover maybe our asbestos inspections. And then um, Greg, provided they have time, has already said he'd take down the one on Plimpton because that one's an easy access. So we can just yeah. get a dumpster right down there. He can get equipment down there, take it down, get it done. It shouldn't cost too much for us. Um, I think the one on Plimpton should, um, should have been kept. I didn't see that there was any reason why that couldn't have been renovated and can't re roofed. Be. It can't be. We had three guys that know construction that went in and looked at it for the trails committee. And they said that it wasn't just the roof. Some of the side timbers are not structurally sound and the foundation is not structurally sound for anything other than a simple task. So what well, Trails Committee shed. would like yeah. to look at is yeah. taking it down and being able to replace it on site with something like a warming shed. Okay. It, yeah. Right, it's built into the CR that something can yeah. go back in that place. Right. So taking it down won't affect that. But so I'm going to work on filling in this table based off the numbers that I get. I'm still waiting for the asbestos person to call, but um, I can call some other people too. But then also um, invasive species removal is also the preservation of the asset, so we can ask for funding for that. So for this coming year, um, for Heinz property, um, Joe. Kowalski had done um, some work last year, um, and that was foliar spray um, of some invasives. So I talked to him a little bit about that, um, and he was saying that he kind of recommended, we still have a little bit of money left in WIP that we can do maybe a little bit more foliar there with that money. You still have, what, about $1,000 left? A little bit more than that, I think. Yeah. Around there, though. Yep. Um, so what he was recommending, there's a lot of autumn olive there, and to do, like, the cut and drip um, for that, and I mean, it's a pretty big property. So, what is this you're talking about? Um, Heinz, Heinz, sorry, Heinz. And the yeah. problem is that Heinz, we've opened up a lot of trails, we've had a lot of people using the trails. The trail sections are quite good, but the invasives have really started taking over the side areas. So, between the paths, there literally has been an explosion of autumn olive. I mean, literally, yeah. an explosion. So, autumn olive or Russian olive? I think it's it, autumn. I think it's autumn. Joe insisted while he was on the commission that we stop calling it Russian olive and start calling it autumn olive. So he's the arborist. <laughs> so um, he, he gave me an idea, like maybe um, two people for a couple <laughs> days up there for work. You know, for this year, this like that, like 3,500 could be a, a good 
estimate to cover what could get done there. And then also with like, I was thinking a follow up monitoring report to see like what needs to be done for the following year. Um, and then on Plimpton, um, one thing that Glenn had asked for in a past budget, which he didn't get, was money to do um, some invasive species control there before um, things got established. So uh, I just said about $1,000 based off that's what we, Joe, did for Foliar at Heinz last year, thinking that at least that could get us something for this year. And then also with like a report to see what would need to be done for next year. Um, but I kind of thought too, what I wanted to do was to kind of take this year and look at the different properties and identify what type of management things need to be done. Um, like lead mine has, you know, and Heinz, the early successional fields. There's the hay field at Heinz. Um, some of that stuff we actually, um, instead of putting it in our budget, um, DPW, um, Barbara put it in his budget because they can do the mowing for us. They did the mowing at Heinz last year. Yeah. Um, they'll actually do the mowing um, up They've there the for us. They've done the mowing for us for about 11 years. And the system was that Greg allowed one of his men yep. to come in on a Saturday and use DPW equipment and we paid the man whatever his normal rate would be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it worked out really, really well because it kept the whip grant going. I mean, it was only fifteen thousand dollars. We made that puppy last a <laughs> long time. Yeah. So cool. um, we'll still have that arrangement with them, but instead of doing the we invoice or whatnot, there's money built in, and I have built in a little extra too. Um, that way, in case we can get them to mow the hayfield area before, like that wasn't mowed last year, from my understanding. Before things start establishing there, at least cut it, um, even if it's just with the brush hog. So we're not going to hay the field anymore. Well, we have to get a new arrangement with someone, and if we do that, then we have to also, um, I think, advertise and go through a process for that. So I don't know. It's not that we can't do that, um, well, but we don't have anything set up. We didn't make any money from it. It was free. No, I, I know, but I think we would have to, you know, give other people equal opportunity if someone wanted to do it. Then I'm, I'm not sure the whole process, but I could check the on that. The process is an over $10,000 process. If it's under $10,000. It was no okay. cost. That's just what I was yeah. told. Deb so Grant did the mowing. Yeah. And she got all of the hay yeah. at no cost. Right. Right. And we can still get an arrangement like that, well, but until then. I tried with a guy from Brimfield who we put, Dave Peterkin and I put together four separate properties so that the guy had over 100 acres that he could mow. And it was not enough profit to be able to make it worth his while to come Go and do it. Go all the way up there, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. Deb Grant was on a butter to the property, so she could come down and she could pick up 25 or 30 bales and bring them right up to the barn where her cattle were. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it was yeah. a simple transition yeah. for her. Somebody else has to actually load the equipment and blah, blah, blah. You know all the problems. Okay. Right. And even if we just yeah. brush hog it, yeah. too, I think that that's going to help maintain it as is for a little while. It won't be as great, but once you're a year. You're talking about Heinz now? Yeah. But yeah. We, yeah. yeah. One thing I've noticed I'd that's not on here, and maybe it belongs someplace else, is the whole thing about the beaver deceiver. I don't, yeah, I don't know if that's something Who's that could go on here. I think Trails is paying for that. That's correct. For Heinz. Yeah. 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 They have to. Yeah. Because it's more than just maintenance. Okay. Yeah. So is that in their budget, or is that yes. something that they're planning on doing? Or? They're planning on doing it. They yeah. They have some money from a different fund that they're going to use for it. And they're not planning on doing it till like, late summer anyways, they told me, so. Well, that's because that's when the water is already down significantly. <clears throat> no, I know. Yeah. Um, one thing that isn't on here that I talked to Glenn about last year, I don't think that it got in his records or anything, but we own a number of pieces of property that are small. That yes. was paid yep. for by CPC money. Why would it not be conceivable to make small pocket parks out of them? I'm thinking specifically of that property um, off of Blueberry Lane. We go all the way down, and yep. that would make a perfect pocket park. It's on Blueberry Lane, or it's down Farquhar? It's, it's down below that. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the river. I said Two Blueberry. I didn't mean Blueberry. I meant Robin. Oh, um, Robin. Robin Hood. Go past Annie Wilson's house, take a left, go up the hill, go down the hill, turn a right, go up the hill, and about three quarter way, we went and looked at a person's house, and the stream was right in back of the house, and we told them that we wanted the small platform that they had out. Oh, Cricket Drive? Where cricket by Drive cricket? you're talking about. 
Insect Valley is what I call it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Cricket, but cricket does. that would be an ideal place for a pocket park. And it would not take a heck of a lot of funding to be able to do it. But you would have to hire an outside contractor because the 8, 10, 12, or 15 people that you have on the Trails Committee already are overburdened with properties like Lead Mine and Plimpton. You could, you could um, well, you, I think because it's in a neighborhood, you'd have to talk to the neighbors and see. Okay, but th those are. Those are not insurmountable problems. What I'm asking for is whether it would be proper for us to put in here to request money from the uh, CPC or the CPA money to fund that kind of thing. Because well, a number of properties that we have would be absolutely ideal for this. Well, I was thinking of the one that is down... Um that is literally down on the Quinnebog. The two yeah, acres. That we, we bought have. the property from Buddy Sopa. We didn't buy it. And, okay, we got it. it's it's under an acre. Yeah. And if we could use money just to gain access to that. Well, we can only get money from them for properties that were purchased with CPA funds. No, that's the that's the original okay. definition. Oh, okay. No, no. Are other properties? Other properties can be. Um, it, it depends on the situation. Oh, okay. No, I didn't, I didn't but know that. But the SOPA property would be so perfect because it dovetails with Army Corps, it dovetails with the Quinnebog River, and it dovetails with River Road. Or you yep. can access that puppy, Yeah. but right now it's difficult to access. It would be just a beautiful piece of land yeah. to open up a picnic bench. Just open it up so that people can actually use it. Why buy all this property by the town and not do something with it. Shepherd oh, would be nice idea. for something yeah, like that too. Idea. Yeah. The shepherd parcel, yeah. even Shepherd's it's got the Quinnebog. Right or, on the Quinnebog. Yeah. You know. Well, that I, we've always talked about, and I don't, that what we talked about for that was to have a canoe launch, to have a little parking lot and a yeah. canoe launch. Yeah. And that would be ideal for that. That's all you need to do. What about like a <clears throat> dog park there? I don't know if it would fit on the CR, but I mean, there's that whole open portion well, in the front. And then the rest is well it's pretty it's it's pretty overgrown I mean, nothing yeah it would have to be cleared a little bit but right it's because it's mostly tornado damage there yeah well another good place to have a canoe launch which we had thought about maybe 10 years ago is the property we were going to make into a baseball field off of route 15. what's the name of that property? that's what we're talking about shepherd parcel oh that's not what we were just referring to yes it is that's what I was referring to. If there's something else, you no, we were still talking about the Buddy Sopa property. I no, think. she changed. The oh, sorry. She, oh. We changed the subject up here. She's too quick. I, you guys, <laughs> stop whispering. <laughs> sorry. I mean, it, but you're it, right. That was that would be absolutely right. ideal, We'd, and that was part of the original plan. If it got made into a baseball field, since the parking was already going to be there, we were going to just put a small extension down and have a canoe and kayak launch area right on the Quinnebog. Yep. Yep. What about a dog park and canoe launch with a small parking lot? Yep. I mean, is that something that funding could come well, from? Well, dog them park for? would be cool. what, What's a dog park? Is that like in New York where you have a fence in the area? For, I think you'd have to have it fenced in. Because we don't have, you can't let your you dog. You can't fence it. Right, you'd have to fence it. You'd have yeah, to fence it in the area. Yeah. I don't know if that's in the CR or not that you yeah. can do something like that. You, can't, but. Any, you cannot establish a permanent structure in the CR. Right. Now, to that end, though, for the canoe launch, for example, the um, Army Corps of Engineers had already agreed that they would sign a lease permitting that use and that access yeah so can we ask cpc about that for the shepherd parcel about maybe thinking about that as an option or would we have to come with a plan for what it would cost to maybe put a parking and things like well, that whatever it is that you do you you take it to community preservation and they uh, bless it and then they put it on the um town warrant okay and then it goes to the voters and the voters monday vote. night special so there would need vote to be a money proposal ahead of time for something like that yeah but what she's asking though Ed, is how detailed a plan and how accurate does the spending proposal need to be in the very beginning not too normally not too but um it depends like like tommy what tommy comes before us every you know like he's got thirty thousand dollars this year for for projects for trails and, and um he outlines what they're doing with it so that we know that we're not illegal <laughs> Which is something we can't do, you know. 
Yeah. But, so. And the only issue I could see is that, it, well, would we have issues? I mean, it could just be a gravel parking area, but it is pretty close to the river there. Like, how far? We, we wouldn't be that close because of the property boundaries mm -hmm. anyways, well, I think, the, but. The place go, um, the, you'd have to, you'd have to, well, take a look at it when the snow snows okay. off. Because where you want to turn in <clears throat> is where you probably want to put the um, okay. parking lot. But would you want to, should we try to present something this year or wait for next year, maybe? I'm just thinking because well, it's next week. It depends on what it is, too. It's next, next week. week. We're pr pretty much, um, well, talk about it at the meeting. Talk about timing at the meeting because I, I think we're pretty much closed, but I may be wrong. All for, right. For, for this, t but there's always special. <coughs> yeah. They have them all the time. You wanted to go to the town meeting. I don't think you'll have enough time. Right. That's what I'm saying. I don't yeah. think there is. Yeah. I mean, I think you can start to get some of your ducks in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Plant the seed. Right. And I can say for next year, maybe too, an idea for next year. Think about some other things. And the other thing you have to figure out what, uh, with um, trails. What you know, what trails is interested in, you know, which overlaps, what doesn't. And um, an open space, you should talk to open space committee too, from the point of view of. When's that open space committee meeting at? April 11th, maybe? It's in April, I believe. Yeah. Is it on her? April 11th. Yeah. At the public house? Yeah. All right. But like, like for example, the Belanger property has been on the open space radar. Yeah, for twenty years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. This is good, Becky. Yeah, that's forward progress. Yeah. I don't need that. They've been putting this this one off forever, but quickly, okay. the lake brochure is being reprinted. Nothing major on it, but I just had a question and suggestion for maybe this, a revision. Is this the new pre reprint? No, this is the original one, but I original figured you could look at it. So it feels crispy like it was print, just print, came off. It's sitting in a box since it's yeah. been printed. Yeah. So, all right, so project activities that do not require permitting. Yeah. It says retainer wall repair. Um, no permits required if work is done during lake drawdown and no machinery is involved. Now, we also, under project activities that require permitting, have retainer wall installation or repair. So I thought that <coughs> in the first section where it says do not require permitting, I mean, I think we should note that some retainer wall repairs may not require because we don't know what they're doing. And then right. if they're chiseling off cement and it's going into the resource area, I just I thought that, that we should, even if it's a letter permit, we should maybe not have that as. You want to take that one out? I think that's what you need to do. You shouldn't have it both places. You're trying to make it easier for them to understand what's going on. I uh, yeah, I agree. You know, because this one it says, you know, first it says to consult us. Like, yeah. You know, for these ones yeah. that may require permitting, so it doesn't make sense yeah. to have it in two places. So. What do you guys think? Absolutely, I agree. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then um, under. That's not coming out right. Yep. So we'll just leave just the one other, yeah, yeah. Uh, just write minor projects that require minimal landscaping? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and then um, project activities which are prohibited, it says sand or beach enhancement. Um, I don't think that that's actually prohibited. I think you can do it, but you need, you know, with like DEP and thinking about it, I was trying to like look up beach nourishment, most of it was coastal stuff, but you Obviously, like that. Obviously, it's different. In our regs, we do have a section that says, yep. "Yeah, replacement of eroded lake bed material, which constitutes normal grooming of any existing beach and not the expansion." Blah blah blah. Um, the work may be conducted during 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 annual lake drawdown, but must be done without disturbance to the buffer zone or lake. Addition of the equivalent of more than one truckload goes beyond normal maintenance. So it pretty much says that. They can do that. They don't have to come before us to, before they do it? Well, I'm looking at the revised. I think they still have to come before us for a letter yeah. permit. Um, yeah, but that's it, the way we've handled it, is with a letter permit. Yeah, and I mean, I don't, 
think it's a bad thing to leave like you know don't add beach or sand but also we are going to let them maybe we need to note that you know yeah. contact the, just add a sentence in there because it, it's not yeah where have i um read that it is allowed that you you get what 10 percent? david help me out 10 percent of your front le, on a new home that's not never had waterfront uh it's 10 percent of the total ten, property 10 percent of your total property and you can put um sand or beach you, you can maintain a beach what? you're talking about bank alteration yeah so yeah, yeah you get 10 yeah. percent or 50 feet whichever 50 is feet. less yeah. yep yeah. But, the, but the note that you almost always have to see attached to it is that no filling is permitted therefore none of that sand can be earmarked for beyond the water line right because then you might need an army corps permit right. and exactly yeah yeah so and they're gonna, they're gonna confuse beach um replenishment wet versus dry beach. yeah yeah right so because we already saw that our friend peter yeah yeah i mean i i don't think it's a bad thing if it's just kept the way it yeah. is and if someone wants to do it, they can contact right but. right let's leave it the way it is then. okay and we'll just All change right. the other one um the Done. one one more minor change on the second fold out when you open it up one two three go to the very bottom where you got that box yep it says uh, lake drawdown is a control lowering of the lake's water level in Sturbridge this is done annually I'd like to change the word before to the word by by yeah yeah all right because or in fact if they try to do it much before November 1st we'll raise hell with them <laughs> right okay <clears throat> Says before November 1st? Yes. Yeah, sure, says before. And we wanted to say by November, by November 1st. Yeah. And one of the reasons for that is because there have been some occasions where uh, some of the lakes committees have come before us and requested that we approve of a lake drawdown on October 15th. Yeah. All right. Great. That's it. You can keep those if you want. Because they won't be good anymore. Because no. I mark them up. <laughs> All right. The last thing is the um the minutes we're not doing. Yep. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. My wording may be wrong. Maybe what we should be saying is on or after yeah. November first. Okay. By is not the right wording. Yeah, because it would still they could do it in July and be right. that's correct. <laughs> yeah, they they could really put it to us that way. On or after, I think. On or after? Yes. And I wonder if a note shouldn't be added to the available resources part. Just at the very bottom when you say, when in doubt, call us, or something to that effect. Make it very user-friendly. I think it does. I think there is a section. Um, Oh, are you talking about that section? Um, it's on the back right here. Well, no, this it says to call us that we can help back you. Back of it is. No, if you open up the middle. The conservation department is available to you as a resource. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, it also says. That. that could be enough. Yeah, I think that's enough. To consult the conservation agent. I don't think you need to say more. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because no. up here it says applicants for any permits are welcome to discuss their plans, blah, blah, blah. The person can help you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now the only other thing we have is the QQLA permit. Steve emailed some comments he had, and then I have a Dave's, copy of them here, yeah. yeah, Dave's been kind of working on it, researching a little bit. So I found letter that you guys issued in 2016 is there a QQLA file um, I don't know we have a South Pond file filing but okay. I don't know if there's a QQLA. does the South Pond file 
indicate anything about the um, invasive species removal project? I think that's that that's what it is. That's the one that has okay. orders, orders or conditions for it. That's what they because call it. I'm curious about whether we contributed any monies to that, or if all we did was contribute uh, question, answer, and approvals. Because we 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 we, um, we gave them money. I thought we did. Yeah. One of the things our letter should indicate is that it was a while ago. Though. We, it wasn't like yeah, but we year. have done something yeah. in terms of trying to help to maintain the um, viable condition of South Pond for our town. And what we're looking for is for other uh, neighbors to do a similar type of thing. Well. I have a little bit different take on this. First of all, I really don't feel that we should be treating a town's sewerage and putting it into a great pond. The, the effluent into a great pond. I think that is a sin. And it, it's, it's an action that cannot, with, our, with modern technology, be remediated in any way, shape, or form. There are, as I've said, there are 80,000 chemicals that have been invented since World War II, and there's only about three of them we're talking about taking out of, uh, of, of the, wa the, the water supply. So I really, um, I think it's a real mistake that DEP, uh, EPA made to take that plant, put it, and dump it into a great pond. And every year that we continue to dump it into a great pond is a, is a year that that place gets worse and worse. So your positive statement is that we should send the DEP and EPA a note and say, we don't want any part of this. You guys are stupid. You haven't done anything in 25 years. And therefore, I, I don't know. No, but I'm in the reverse of what you were saying is starting off with telling them what we have done because it's like our response, you know, our, what we've done What's being done, all, all that, that treatment plant, all it's doing is f feeding invasives. Anybody that goes by South Pond after the month of July knows full well the net result of that water coming in through Seven Mile River, yeah, so. which goes right through that sewage treatment plant in Spencer. So I think we should, what I would like to do is, is to, to, to do, you know, I, you know, What's your suggestion for a letter, Mr. Chairman? My suggestion is that we tell them that, that we, we're, we're dissatisfied with the State of the Union. And that, um, that, that being said, that we would, you know, we, we want them to continue. This is, I read, I haven't read the, um, I read the High Gang, okay? Well, this is all very, very vague. And it's it, it's um, cuddling. If, if to so you mean uh, Leon's letter? No, um, I didn't read Leon's. I read Steve's. Steve's letter. Yeah, he's not suggesting that as a letter. No, I know his note. Okay, I wasn't saying that he was. Um, but I think we, you know, DEP, EPA. Um, well, that's my position. I can't. I can't tell you that. I, you know, yeah. We we support the, you know, Lake Association. We've tried to do everything we can. There there are two, two um, nesting eagles on that lake, and to be uh, to be doing what doing to that lake is is a sin. I mean, I think it's a good idea to write a letter, but I don't think it'll have any impact on anything. Yeah. Are they going to do anything about it? Well, what the what QQLA is trying to do is to get EPA or DEP to put some teeth into their requirements. I think that's fine. It's good. Because thus far they haven't done it. I mean, I see nothing wrong with us supporting that. We definitely support that. But I mean, and, and writing a letter in support of that. 
but I'm not sure that it'll make much difference, frankly. I know, but sometimes you have to tilt oh, the windmills. No question, no question. I, that, that's why I say I don't think anything. There's nothing wrong with with writing a letter. As a matter of fact, one should write lots of letters. Mm -hmm. the only thing why don't we have? Is, well, my proposal would be that we have Becky put together a letter to DEP um, supporting QQLA, and but I think we should say at the beginning that, of the letter that, that what's happening is a tra travesty. I think it, it doesn't hurt anything to say it. I mean, you can look somebody in the eye and say this is a terrible thing that's happening. Well, we we can say within the uh, guidelines of the Wetland Protection Act that we see it as a violation of the Wetland Protection Act that the effluents coming at present time the effluents coming from that sewage treatment plant are a violation of the right. Wetland That's Protection what I'd like Act. To say. Yep, I yep. absolutely agree with that. That's good. That's a good thing. Yep. And we can say we support the QQLA in their attempts at improving the situation. Right. And we would hope that there would be some um, enforcement of the statute, and I forget uh, MPDE something or other, whatever that national pollution. Right. If, if you look at the note that I sent you guys from yeah. um, the QQLA, You'll see it listed in there, and Steve mentioned it okay. two or three yeah. times in his. But it, uh, you want to put some, you want to put some teeth in that. You want them to be enforcing it, because what has happened in the past is we've had that permit. We had the permit in 2005, but the DEP did not enforce it. No, and the EPA was never brought into the case because DEP did not enforce it. If they had enforced it. It would have moved up the chain. The whole bugaboo the whole time has been that the town of Spencer does not want to spend the money that's required to bring their septic treatment plant up to grade. They don't want to spend the money, period. And as Ed said, that's wrong, but we have to point out that it is, in fact, our job to protect the lakes. Yep. And this is a violation of the Wetland Protection Act. That's that's all I've got to say. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. All right. Okay. Okay, Beck, you got a, yep. an idea for yep. it? Yep. And what about the um, the Mass Highway Project portion, too? What Mass Highway Project? Well, Mass DOT is scheduling the bridge flow barrier replacement oh, next year. Wait. So that's a, that that's, was on the email, that's too. Exactly, that's exactly the same process. Between the East Brookfield part of Quimqua Quasset Pond and what we call South Pond, which is a sturdy <laughs> part, yeah. there is at the present time a barrier. Mm -hmm. It is a movable barrier, so it's like a dam. Right. It's the same kind of dam that we've seen in a number of rivers around town, like the one that goes in the river that goes through Leadmine Pond, which is in Connecticut. It's a bunch of two by eights that, yeah. <laughs> that slide down. What QQLA is suggesting is that they raise that by 18 inches. I don't think we should take a position on that for the simple reason that no studies have been yeah. shown to me that indicate that that will work. And late summer, when the water level in Seven Mile River drops down, the water level in South Pond drops down. We've seen it on the shoreline at the homes down in the cove where they can't moor their boats anymore. They have to put a new buoy out in the middle. And you raise that by 18 inches, what in the world is that going to do to the water? Right. Well, okay. We don't want to take a position on that. Okay. No. Yeah. So that, I think that, that we, so we okay. should yeah. avoid that. That gives you that, right? Yeah. All right. I'll work on drafting something. But do put something in there about the um, pet nesting pier. I'm serious. About the nesting pier of eagles and the fact that, that it's a great pond. It's a beautiful pond. And to be um, used it as an open sewer for... for uh, a local town is is, is piss right. poor. And make sure you capitalize great. Well, say it just like that. What? Make sure yeah. you capitalize great pond. Yeah. 
Capital G, capital P. And if anyone has any suggestions for exact language, if you want to email me, that would that be was I, I did. That was a, yeah. It's an open sewer. I'll send you something tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But I'm serious about the Great Pond because that is the status of that parcel of water. No, I know. It is truly a great pond. Yeah. Beautiful. It goes to, look it up. It goes to like 60 feet deep in one spot. Wow. They're ruining it. What I don't understand is why the fishermen who flock to that place year round haven't raised hell. I know. It's because they're eating the fish. Yeah. <laughs> don't even go there with, oh, yeah. your, with your 800 uh, chemicals. Okay. Is that, is that it, Becky? <laughs> Beck, I think we. That's all. I'm shutting oh. down. Okay. <laughs> I'll second the motion. All in favor? Wow, that's the first time we've ever had our agents shut down before we... <laughs> <laughs>